Hi, so I'm back again with my video vlog and this time I am very surprised to find myself in this particular place. It's a gun show in the Midwestern state of Iowa in the United States of America. And the reason I'm here, I have to admit, there are two reasons. Firstly, you know, I have a master's in defense strategy and therefore I've always been interested in looking at weapons as very important artifacts that influence the journey of a culture. But secondly, I was very intrigued to want to see what does a gun show really mean for the local ecosystem. And so you can see behind me an array of weapons, guns, accessories of all kinds, knives, knife sharpeners, all the weapons that I've you know, always heard of, the Smith and Wessons and the Colts and the Glocks and the Berettas, all my favorite women detectives, the things that they carry, it's all here. But that's not the interesting thing that I wanted to talk about. The most incredible thing that I have to say, when I was coming here, I was sure that this venue would have an energy that was aggressive and full of tension. And I was preparing myself to understand that. But it's just far from that. Instead, it feels like, you know, the energy you would find in a place that is meant for families to get together and have a relaxing time during the weekend, like a family fun fair place. It's really like that. It's very safe. There are little children, there are old ladies, both selling weapons and buying weapons. There are families as buyers and sellers. They're all warm, polite, very nice people. This surprises me very much. And so, you know, I wanted to know more about what does that mean? Why then do all these wonderful people, very different from the image I had constructed in my mind of who would be here buying and selling guns, why are all these people here so interested in guns? I talked to some people here and two things stand out as being very important. First, a sense of rugged individualism, you know, modeled on the frontiersman who protects his family, himself and his family and his land on his own without any interference from the government. That's one. And second is a fundamental distrust of the benign nature of a government. And so these two things seem important drivers for all these nice family people to want to possess means of protecting themselves. And then I question myself, so if this culture had not been such an individualistic and low hierarchy culture, if it had been like many of, say, the emerging market cultures, very collectivist, very group oriented, very hierarchical, if this culture had been like that, would all these people have had different mental models about what an individual was allowed to do and not permitted to do in terms of protection? Would it have thought of protection in a different way altogether? Food for thought. But this is not the end. I'm going to now travel 100 miles south of this place. Same ecosystem, same state. And I'm going to look at something special just 100 miles south of here. And both are part of the local ecosystem. So wait till I get to my next destination. So here I am, 100 miles south of the place where the gun show was being held. This is Fairfield, still very much in the state of Iowa. And um, it's a small town with a population of about 10,000 people. But here's the twist. 3,000 out of those 10,000 people are meditators. This town of Fairfield is the center of Maharishi Mahesh Yogi's transcendental meditation movement. And so it's, you know, it's not surprising that you see these two meditation domes, one for men and one for women, 
just behind me. In fact, at this very moment, there are 2,000 people meditating in these domes. There are houses everywhere that are built according to the principles of Sthapatya Ved. There are cafes that um, serve sattvic food. There are schools and colleges that um, you know, have a curriculum based on Vedic principles. And so all these people, all these meditators, they're people who've come from across the United States of America, from across the world, and from various professions. They're scholars, they're business, businessmen and businesswomen, they're students, they're artists, they're housewives. So the question that I have is why did they come here? And why do they meditate? Okay, so um, Sam and I am very curious to know from you what exactly brought you to Fairfield and you know, why made you want to meditate? Um, before I came to Fairfield, I was doing a meditation with my one of my really good friends who came here to Fairfield with me, and um, I never knew any structured meditation. It was just very spontaneous. Just, if I felt like meditating anywhere, wherever I was, I'd sit down and do it in any manner, close my eyes, open my eyes, whether I was walking or whatever. So uh, I wanted to find some structure some, and people who else, who else, who other, others who like to meditate. Okay. So, you know, as you sort of um, maybe interacted with others who meditate, you knew more about this whole issue of the structure, etc., that made you want to learn. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. How long have you been uh, Almost a year. Almost a year? Yeah. And what do you do other than meditation? Are you a student? I'm a student, yeah. I attend MUM. Okay. Yeah. Very good. What about you? What brought you here? What made you I grew up in meditation. Yeah, interesting. Okay. So, and I came all the way from Nigeria. From Nigeria? I don't know where I came here. My brother was here. He taught me. He told me a lot of stuff about it. But when I came, I realized why it was like, you know, all the studies is that it's really unique. It's like, uh, I think people are making it. There's people from all over the world, from all over the places, culture, and looking for the same. And so, uh, you know, if I were to ask uh, both of you, what is the one thing that you have got from doing BDTM? What's that one thing? What would that be? That's a good question. Um, a lot, a lot of bliss. Bliss would be like, the best answer I can give. Uh, easier life. How do you feel easier life? Easier in terms of like, you don't need to do a lot of efforts to reach your goals. You know, everything is like connected, everything is natural, it's like just straight to the point. You don't lose time doing other things because other people are not looking at um, I want to ask you, out of curiosity, what is it that brought you here to Fairfield and how long ago was that? Alright, I moved to Fairfield in 1991 and the reason I moved here is because Marishi asked many of us to please come because of the war that was going on and to help create group consciousness. And the more of us that do our program together, the more consciousness is shifting from a very, very deep level. So that's why I came. Okay. And, and this was uh, when the Iraq war was exactly, going on? Exactly, 1991. Okay. So it's been 20 years that you've been here? Yeah. Okay. 20 years.
And so when did you start meditating? It was before you came here. You'd already started TM. Right, I started TM in 1974. And it was actually actually after fighting it vehemently for two years. I didn't want to hear a word about it. I didn't want to know the first thing about it until I met someone who had what I wanted to experience. And she really didn't have to say anything and I just asked her. I said, what is it about you? And uh, I resonated with her because she was a corporate person and I had always been in corporate. And she just told me she was practicing transcendental meditation and she had what I wanted. And when I came back from Mexico, I went right to find a TM teacher and it's been forward ever since. And so, um, you know, today, uh, 26 or 7 years up since you've been meditating, if somebody who doesn't know anything about TM was to ask you, what is it that you feel the most because of TM that you got, what would that be? Just Most usually, what, what, what I would say is that even though we all have things that go on in the surface world, I know even my friends can attest to the fact that nothing phases me. I experience the, the depth, I experience that inner deep silence, a peace that cannot be put asunder by anything. Nothing that goes on in my life could possibly change what I know and what I experience to be real. And so I know that if I experience these things before I started meditating, <coughs> I can truthfully say that I would not be alive right now. That my life has changed so much and even through chaos I experience peace. Tremendous peace, and nothing can shake me. That was beautiful, and that's the truth. Yeah. So it's interesting, isn't it? Just hundred miles north from here was the gun show, a manifestation of the gun culture. A very controversial topic. And much has been said, written, and filmed about that topic. Some very dramatic articulations, whether from Charlton Heston or Michael Moore, representing opposite ends of the debate. And then here, in Fairfield, the consciousness culture. What does it one make of these two seemingly opposite kinds of cultures in the same ecosystem? When I've been thinking about it, and my conclusion is that actually both are expressions for the same drivers, the same motivators. And what are those drivers? The drivers are that of freedom and security. One finds its expression through the barrel of the gun by protecting oneself, one's family and one's land and therefore feeling the freedom and the independence and the security. On the other hand, here, that expression rises from the deep belief in the lines of the Bhagavad Gita that say that even a slight advancement on the spiritual path can lead to free oneself from great fear free the agitations of the mind and experience deep inner peace. So it's fascinating that the ecosystem, any ecosystem, probably, but I'm looking at this ecosystem, the ecosystem builds its own internal checks and balances. And so it allows multiple pathways to accommodate very diverse range of expressions. And at the end of the day, it all balances. Thank you. That's all for me this time.